welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll begin our exploration of existential quantifiers. What we'll do first is we'll look at existential introduction. From propositional logic, let's recall how we introduced disjunction. And that was a fairly simple process. What, if we put it in English, what we were saying is, if a formula is true, then that formula conjoined with any other formula is true. And we had two ways that we could do that. That is, if we had a formula, then it could be that formula disjoined with another formula. And notice that that is not specified. So that was disjunction introduction type 1. And if a formula was on a line of its own, then we could conclude that any formula disjoined with it was also true. And that was our disjunction introduction type 2. Now, when we get to an existential one, what we're saying is if a statement about one object in our universe of discourse is true, then there exists an object such that that's true. So what we'll have is our usual side condition. And this will be a side condition on a formula. Phi, which is that a term T is free for X in Phi. And the way that this is written is if we have a formula and T has been substituted for X in a way that doesn't cause T to be bound, so Let's just think of it is if, if this term is, for example, a fresh variable. If that fresh variable is substituted into the formula and it doesn't become bound, then that formula, if that formula is on a line of its own, we can conclude that something in the universe satisfies that formula. And that's our existential introduction. So this the strategy can be either forward or backward. So let's say that the strategy is either. So let's take a simple example. Suppose that what we want to do is we want to say everything in the universe has a property Therefore, and now I'm going to change variables for clarity, therefore, something in the universe has that property. So our proof would begin by stating our premise. So for all x, x has property p, so that's a premise. And then we have our conclusion which is there exists an x such, sorry, there exists a y such that y has that property. And if we then look at our premise and look at our conclusion and ask ourselves what reasoning could we use to go between them, we can see that if we are to use forward reasoning, we could say, well, if everything has that property, then something has that property. So what could it be? Well, let's think about what variables we could do the substitution on. We can't substitute x for x because that would violate the free for x condition of universal elimination. We couldn't have y because y is mentioned in our goal. So let's suppose that we pick some other variable. So let's simply say that we'll assert that P of something is true. And that can be a line in our proof. And that would come from universal elimination based on line one. 
Now, if we look at our conclusion, we can see that the formula in the, within the goal line has had a term substituted for its quantified variable, and that term is free for that variable. Let's go through this slowly. This is, there exists a y such that the formula contains y. So the, what, we're, what we want to do is we want to verify that this formula is on a line, that's one part of it, and that it appears so that the variable that's mentioned in that formula is free for y. Is that true here? Yes. So we could then say that this proof is complete by saying that that is existential introduction based on line two. Now, when I said that this strategy could be either, what I mean is we could have reasoned if we have there exists a y such that y has property p, I could say, well, I'll just introduce a brand new variable, and I'll call it z. Could be w, could be almost anything, as long as it is an x or y. And if that, is, if that variable is free in the goal formula, and it's free in the lines that are above, that makes it a really good choice. Because I could reason that that if I could get, th get to this point, I could get to this point, and I can get to this point from this point. We can see from this example that when we're introducing variables in predicate logic and natural deduction, we have to be very careful about how we select our variables.